Okay, so um, we are now recording um, a lecture on XML for data architecture and modeling. We start this course um, discussing XML, and the reason why I would like to start this course with XML is because um, XML is a key component of interoperability. And this course is all about learning elements that can lead us to interoperability of healthcare systems. So, um, what is XML? XML um, stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's a language that is used to ensure interoperability between healthcare systems. It was actually not designed for that, but turns out that it is very helpful in ensuring interoperability between healthcare systems. Uh, XML is a markup language just like HTML. I'm sure many of you may know HTML. Uh, XML is used widely uh, in implementing technologies like cloud computing, web services, etc. etc. So XML uh, comes from computer science world. It does not come from the healthcare world. But turns out that something that comes from the computer science world is extremely helpful in healthcare. So before XML, we used database systems, right? Since 1970s, database systems, um, even before that, database systems have been very popular. We put patient data in databases and we retrieve them, we add data, we remove data, etc. etc. So, database systems um, usually represent what we call the structured data. The reason why we call databases as structured data is because everything is defined within rows and columns. There is nothing outside rows and columns. Like for example, I used to live in Birmingham, Alabama. And if you are living in Birmingham, Alabama, um, on the south side or north side, if you tell somebody that I am on the intersection of this avenue and this street, immediately people would know where you are living, right away. Because everything was divided in streets and avenues, horizontal avenues and vertical streets. So the intersection would tell exactly where you are living. So that is an example of structure. Okay. Um, not so much the case with um, Orlando and Oviedo and all these areas. Um, however, we have to know that not all data is collected and inserted carefully and designed uh, for structured databases. Some of the data could be ad hoc. For example, there's uh, some data coming in from an image or something like that. So we cannot expect all data to have a proper structure. In some applications, data is collected as an ad, in an ad hoc manner um, because you know structure cannot be implemented at times. So this leads to the concept of semi-structured data where the data has some structure but it is not like really strictly structured. So let's take a look at what this semi-structured data is all about. The key difference between structure and semi-structured data concerns on how schema constructs are handled. In semi-structured data, the schema information is mixed in the data values. For example, if I'm walking into a conference and I have a name tag on me, that says, oh, I'm Varadraj Gurpur, I'm from University of Central Florida, and these are my credentials. I have a PhD and I have an RHIA. So people look at that name tag that's hanging on my neck and say, oh, this is who this guy is. So I'm self-defining myself by wearing that name tag, right? But in some places, if I'm in a room and only people who have a PhD or a doctoral degree are supposed to be in that room, then I don't have to wear a name tag on what my credentials are because only people of that particular credential are supposed to be in that room. That's structure. 
In semi structure, the data carries its identity with itself. So this is what we call as self-describing data or data that describes itself. So in XML, we have a hierarchical structure and we have self-describing data. Okay. Um, and XML documents have uh, information uh, in a hierarchical logical format in a form of a logical flow. Um, when I say logical flow, I'm talking about parts and subparts. You have a main body and you have sub body of that main body and then you have the sub body of the sub body. Uh, so, so on and so forth. It's just like a tree where you have the main, uh, you know, um, the main stem um, and then you have the branches and then those sub branches and finally the leaves like that. So this is how data is uh, um, structured in XML. So in XML, as I said, you have a primary object of an XML document referred to as the root and uh, the, the object serves as a parent of all the other objects and there is a layer of objects uh, there are children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, so on and so forth. So, because in XML, as I said, we are talking about hierarchy. And in XML, data is structured in a hierarchical form and it is also self describing. You will be more clear on this when I give you an example. And here's an example right away. I'm sorry, this is not a healthcare example, but my purpose is to make you understand how XML works. Okay? So first we have the version of XML. What are we talking about in this XML document? We are talking about land. So land is the root object. If you see here, land is the root object. You start with land and you end with land. So you, you open a tab called land because it's a root object and the document closes when you close that tab. And you can see the um, the alphanumeric uh, symbol here that is used to close the tag and when you open the tag we don't use that symbol. So within land we have forests and we have meadows. So let's talk about forests. Forests have different trees. You have the oak tree, you have the pine tree, the maple tree. So these are different types of trees. These are different instances of the type tree. The oak, the pine, the maple are the different instances. Similarly with the grass, there are different instances of the graph of the grass, sorry. And the grass forms the meadow. So you see how data is structured here. You have types and then you have subtypes and then you have instances of that particular type. Okay. And uh, you could also identify variables in uh, uh, XML, for example, if the title is management level, you could say it's a mid management level or a higher management level, lower management level, like that. Uh, you, you can have different types of data types in XML. For example, you could have string, decimal, integer, boolean, date, time, etc. These are the most common data types. Let's take a look here. So you have the version of XML. What is the mother um, or the root object here? Is the note. So this XML document is all about a note. A note is going to have a sequence, right? First in that sequence is going to be to whom that note is being addressed. The next is from whom that note is coming from. The heading of the note and the body of the node. So you are defining a sequence here and this is what we call as XML schema. There are two things in XML. I mean there are different types of documents. But one of the type is XML schema. The schema does not give provide any instance. It does not give us the data. But what the schema does is it provides the structure of the data. For example, the note object. This is how the structure of the note object has to be. It has to have a two uh, attribute and then, um, 
uh, not uh, attribute a true element sorry a true element a name a from element a heading element a body element and this is the um, this is how these elements have to be sequenced what is true it's a type string okay uh, what is from it's a type string so all these are strings Okay, so let's take a look at another simple example for XML schema. Name is the uh, object that we are talking about here. Is the name is what we call the name. So name would have different elements within it, and those are the last name, age, and date born. Okay, so the age is an integer. The date born is a date and last name is string. So you can see how this schema is being enforced. You have last name as refness, age 36, date born, this is the date born. Although we are not, in this particular example, we are not uh, enforcing any sequence here. But in the previous example, if I go here, we are enforcing a sequence that it should be in this sequence but in this example we are not enforcing a sequence all we are saying is that the name uh, file should have the last name the age and date bar okay so that's all we, that we are saying uh, again if you have to make it more stricter you have the first name the middle name and the last name and then you have the attribute title title is an attribute associated with the name um, so this is a complex type definition where you have you know the sequence as well as uh, the individual elements and how they have to be sequenced and the attribute associated uh, with that particular uh, sequence complex type so the reason why we use the word complex type is because you have uh, a conglomeration of individual uh, types of elements um, getting together to form one element. For example, name, when we, when we say name, we are talking about the last name, the first name, the middle initial or the middle name and the title. So this is a complex type. The name is not a singular thing. It can be divided into pieces. Okay, let, let's take a look at another example here. You have table, you have table row and table data. Table data uh, contains apples and bananas and then within that table row and you see how uh, we have the instance over here where the name of the table are, is African coffee table. Its width is 80 uh, whatever centimeters uh, inches maybe inches uh, it doesn't specify that here and length is 120 I'm assuming inches so this is how you know you uh, use namespaces in XML to avoid um, conflicts for example there could be another table that's not African coffee table it could be the American coffee table and the American coffee table could have a different a width and a different height. Okay. Another example for namespace here, strict namespacing. We're using this table uh, namespace over here at the top. Um, sorry. Uh, to identify what table we are talking about again we are using this namespace over here uh, which is F here the namespace is H and you can see H being used here here the namespace being used is F and F refers to African coffee table okay so that's how it works okay namespaces are used to avoid conflicts we can say here's a table but it's also another table but different um, 
you know we are talking about do two different things although we are talking about table uh, for example there could be lots of people with the name Joseph Fernandez living in Orlando but how do you different, differentiate between two different Joseph Fernandez maybe the initial name uh, I'm, I'm sorry the middle name the middle initial or uh, it could be some other attribute like the date of birth could be different uh, even if there are two Joseph Fernandez with the same date of birth they may have two different addresses so uh, we use some of that to differentiate um, between elements so that there is no conflict uh, using namespace so namespace uh, creates uniqueness and also could be used for looking up using a parser okay I think we are getting into the same area here okay. so uh, there are two things that we have to know about one is the uniform resource identifier uniform resource identifier is a string of characters which identifies an internet resource for example if I have an XML file on the internet it can be identified using a uniform resource identifier because it's a resource available on the internet a uniform resource locator is something is the most common URI or is a type of a uniform resource identifier that is associated with the internet domain address so URL is also a URI but URL is a subtype of URI why do we keep going to bananas okay XML is used heavily in uh, health information systems to um, uh, ensure uh, HIPAA um, and uh, many of you might already know about HIPAA if you do not know I'll be talking about HIPAA to a length in this course so HIPAA stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act uh, which is used for uh, securing uh, confidential uh, I mean these HIPAA is a set of guidelines that is used to protect patient rights uh, in terms of security and privacy and uh, XML uh, could also be applied uh, in communication between internal systems and external systems such as uh, the US Food and Drug Administration and all that so XML is very very heavily used um, and it's important to learn XML although it might sound like computer science oh this is too technical but you gotta bite the bitter pill of learning XML um, because it's very very important um, in healthcare information technology or healthcare informatics okay with that I conclude lecture one thank you very much